Hey everybody and welcome back to Investment Honey where we talk about various crypto projects. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I'm not your financial advisor. I do not provide financial advice on the channel and I don't even encourage you to invest. But what I am going to do is share with you my own personal opinion and views on the projects discussed on the channel. So with that said, we are looking at Baby World Inu. Uh, let's see here. They did have a, an audit done on this project. It did pass with no higher medium security issues. And uh, the team is photo doxed and they are also video doxed in their uh, Telegram channel. So I'll leave you a link you know, to that so you can see that. Uh, let's see here. We're going to head on over to GemPad to take a look at their pre-sale page. And so we can see that the white this is going to be whitelisted. It's going to start in just over three days. It says here, I am not whitelisted. I am not. So we see an audit badge here and that it's upcoming. So we see some socials. It says this is a new meme coin, you know, on a big mission focusing on utility. Baby World Inu will be the king of memes coin with utility. NFT charity staking and also buyback in staking. That's not spelled correctly. A low tax, massive project and a long term vision. Baby World Inu goal of connecting baby charity organization. Staking with unique formula. A formula will profit the staking. Uh, that time they got it correct. And investors, strong marketing, big partners on board, low market cap, deployer cannot pause contract, cannot blacklist, cannot mint, full Seifu contract address, Seifu team, full team members, docs. Uh, you can go to website and also white paper. So uh, let's see here. We've got a minimum buy of 0 0.1 and a max of 1.5. It's a little over, you know, what I would think is a sweet spot, you know, for the max buy. I tend to think one and below is good, but they've got it at 1.5, which isn't terrible. So, all right, so we see pre-sale rates is going to be this much, um, which I believe that be, let's see here, per BNB maybe. And, or, or I could be wrong on that. Let's see here. Do they have a per BNB rate? I'm looking for it, All right, I actually don't see that, so I'm just going to get, guess maybe you're getting uh, this much per BNB. It's always kind of different, you know, you look at different um, uh, pre-sale uh, launch pads, so, alright, but that's what we'll run with. If I'm wrong, you know, uh, you guys let me know. So, uh, we see a soft cap of 50 BNB and a hard cap of 100, so very, very small uh, raise, you know, on the, um, or at least I don't really consider it a very large raise, you know, in terms of the pre-sale. So, but yeah, 50 BNB is all they've got to raise in order to be able to, you know, say they're going to launch the token. So, just be aware of that. And uh, I don't know if they are oversubscribing. Uh, their whitelist on this one or not because I don't think we've seen any yeah no addresses added yet so so yeah if they oversubscribe this you know by a lot keep in mind um, you know then you're not really going to they're not going to have any trouble you know filling it if they really oversubscribe this by a lot so in every project every team you know has their own kind of method in terms of how they go about doing that some teams you know want to make sure they don't go crazy on oversubscribing because they want to give everybody a fair chance to be able to get in and other teams they just want to make sure that they're going to fill it so they oversubscribe it by you know two three times you know what the hard cap is sometimes so uh, so just keep that in mind but uh, all right that's it you know on the uh, you know on the gym pad pre-sale again keep in mind you got just over three days before this goes live so plenty of time to assess and evaluate the token on your own before this goes live here we're looking at a PowerPoint uh, which is basically essentially their white paper uh, so keep in mind, keep that in mind. So some different slides giving you some information you know, in regards to the token. Nothing you know real fancy about this, you know. So and then we see you know what their roadmap you know looks like here. So uh, we can go ahead and talk about it since we're here in the roadmap and we're we're on the page. We see that we've got four different phases, you know, starting here, assigning the team, designing the smart contract in the website, building uh, the community. So they got some stuff they should clean up here. Private sale, pre-sale. I don't really know what was allocated, you know, to the private sale since they got this indicated here. But I thought on their gem pad page they said there was no private sale. So let me see here. 
Uh, okay. Never mind. All right. They did not say that here. So, all right. So they did have a private sale. I don't know what the contribution was to the private sale. Um, you know, but again, I'll leave that to you guys. You know, when you get into the community, assuming you're interested in the project, uh, you just ask. You know, what did they? What was the hard cap? You know, of their um, of their private sale and how many uh, contributions you know were made to the private sale. If you're not sure, you know, of what to ask when it comes to that kind of stuff, that's simply what it is. Uh, typically. You don't want to see private sales that have a ton of contributions. And if you do have private sales that have a ton of contributions, you basically want to make sure that those private sellers are vested. Okay, because understand they're getting in at a really, really good rate before it goes live. So you got private sale, you got pre sale, and then you got the launch. So, and then sometimes they can have more than one round of private sale. Now, this, for this kind of token, I'm not guessing they had more than one round. I'm guessing it's probably just one round, but if you want to know what kind of questions you should be asking, it is this. How many people contributed to the private sale? How much did you raise in the private sale? And are the private sellers vested? Those are important questions to ask, because if they're not vested, I would say that if you got into a token like this, for, at least for me personally, what I would do is I would let them go ahead and sell whatever they're going to sell. Because if you get in a private sale, you're already pretty much going to be in profit, you know, when it launches. So they're going to go ahead and sell for profit. And then at the dip, what I would do is I go ahead and I jump in. So that's just what I would do personally. But again, um, you guys, I mean, I can't advise you on what to do, so I'm not... And uh, on this channel, obviously, you know that we don't encourage anybody to invest. I can only tell you based on my own experience and what I would do, you know, if it was me personally, you know. So, and that's the information that I would share with you. But ultimately, it's, a, it's up to you as to whether, you know, after doing an evaluation and assessment of the project, whether you want to participate. And then how you participate is completely up to you as well. So I can only share with you what I would do if it was me. So, um... You know, with that said, we get a marketing campaign, pancake swap list, a listing is what they, I think they're meaning to say here. And then we see CMC and CoinGecko uh, marketing. So we see that they're actually spelling out what they're going to be doing in terms of marketing, YouTube, Telegram, and Twitter, PooCoin and other sites to add promotions, even though I really don't care for PooCoin because for me personally, I think that people really don't, it doesn't really translate into a lot of new holders, you know, and so if you're going to be spending marketing funds or money to you know do marketing, you want to get the best return on the investment, in my personal opinion. So, and I just don't think that you really get much on a return for PooCoin ads. Uh, partnership influencers, you know, not sure who they're going you know with in terms of influencers there. Donation, you know, baby care and loss. You see here uh, two, um, or maybe yeah, this was two. So we're seeing here in three. Uh, NFT launch, you know, some percent uh, mint price will be, uh, and this I, I don't really care for. You can't leave it as something so general as some percentage. Uh, as, as a person or when you're trying to speak to an audience, you know, in terms of potential investors, you know, for your project, you want to have something definitive in terms of what percent. Um, we'll go to, um, you know, back for buyback and burn. So um, I just think that to leave this as a very, very general term like, you know, sum, I think that there needs to be something, you know, done there to uh, further address with something more specific as to what's going to be sent back, sent you know, directly, you know, for buyback and burn. And this obviously bleeds out, you know, into this area where you can't even see what's being said. Game launch, you know, they've got an open parenthesis here, doesn't need to be here. Partnership, you know, with NFT marketplace, exchange listings, baby world launch on an NFT marketplace, uh, and the DAO launch as well. And then we see here a swap is coming, token staking, charity, you know, listed on the chain, so they're going multi chain, you know, as well. And they say there's going to be more to be announced. So that would signal to me that there'd be like a V2 of the roadmap. Um, but they definitely have some editing to do, you know, on this. Um, I just think that this this could be this needs to be cleaned up a bit. Um, you know, not a ton of changes need to be made, you know, but definitely indicating what you've already done, you know, crossing those things off, checking them off, um, indicating, you know, where you're at real time in terms of your development, what's pending, what's ongoing. A lot of projects don't really get this right, you know, but the ones that do, they just look far and away better in terms of the roadmaps because of what they're communicating. And it looks like they're very much more connected to the roadmaps, 
you know, uh, than other projects do. So that's just my own personal opinion there. And if we go back to the main page, uh, we see, you know, white paper button, Twitter, tw Telegram. We see an email address here as well. Uh, who you are, who they are. They give you some information in regards to that. More about future development, you know, so creating utility NFTs. Uh, the marketplace and in the two marketplace staking and trading so building a dex um, a swap unique staking formula and the dow launch you know all these things we already covered you know looking at the roadmap as well and then tokenomics you know what's going to what you know so we see seven percent on the buy side in terms of taxes and nine percent on the sell side sell side in terms of taxes and then obviously taking a look at the roadmap the roadmap here looks much cleaner much better than it does looking at what they've got in the white paper and i do believe that the two should be more aligned you got a very different looking white paper than you do uh, as opposed to what's going on here on the main page and there should in my personal opinion be some consistency there so and then here you can see you know team members um you know like i said before uh, the team you know, is photo docs and video docs in the uh, TG. However, we see here that the developer you know, and the web designer not docs you know, on the page. So I guess I should you know, state that even though we've got some of the team, or you know, we'll just say, as you see it in my, in my notes, it'll be basically, you know, we've got some partial photo doxing on the website, but we did get some video doxing uh, in their telegram. All right, so with that said, they've got a FAQ, you know, here. Um, well, they say that it's an FAQ, but you don't really see an FAQ, which is kind of strange. So my uh, suggestion here would be to remove the FAQ just because you don't really have one here. So um, that'll do it for me on this project. Uh, as always, guys, you're free to uh, take a look you know, at the white paper, take a look at their documentation, take a look at their community, and form your own evaluation and assessment beyond you know, what information I've already covered here in the video you know, to you know, inform your level of participation in regards to the project. As always, guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, and you all enjoy the day.